Sepultura is arguably the most influential heavy metal band from Brazil or South America for that matter. But at one point, the departure of their founding member, Max Cavalera, and the ensuing controversy threatened the band's future. Over the years, Sepultura has gone through quite a number of lineup changes, released numerous albums, and faced various challenges. Most notably, the departure of their founding member and lead vocalist, Max Cavalera. This pivotal moment divided Sepultura's fan base with those who believe that the real Sepultura died when Max left the band. Nonetheless, Sepultura continued with new vocalist Derek Green and remained prolific for the next 20 plus years, cementing their status as one of the all-time greats in metal. How did Sepultura put Brazil on the map and establish themselves as the greatest metal export of Brazil? Stay tuned as we look at the roots of Sepultura, from their early days in the Brazilian scene to eventually taking over the world and becoming one of the genre's most influential groups. Formation and First Albums Sepultura was formed in Belo Horizonte, Brazil in 1984 by Max and Igor Cavalera. The band's name, which means grave in Portuguese, was inspired by a Motorhead song. The two were only teenagers at the time, but had already developed a passion for heavy music. The brothers regularly listened to classic rock bands like Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and heavier bands such as Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and Van Halen. Eventually, the brothers stumbled upon Venom and discovered more extreme metal bands like Slayer, Megadeth, Exodus, Creator, and Celtic Frost. The brothers recruited bassist Paolo Jr. and vocalist Wagner Lamanier, who later formed the black metal band Sarcophago. Max eventually took over vocal duties while also playing guitar, and the band recruited lead guitarist Hiro Gedges. In 1985, the band signed with Cogumelo Records, an independent Brazilian label. That same year, they released their first ever recording, the four-track EP, Bestial Devastation. Sepultura's first studio album, Morbid Visions, was released in 1986. The album showcased the band's raw, aggressive sound and featured lyrics that were often violent and satanic in nature. During this point, the band were influenced by more black metal bands like Venom and Celtic Frost and tried emulating their style and sound. Much like Bestial Devastation, the band translated the song's Portuguese lyrics to English word per word. Since they were still struggling with their English at the time, the resulting lyrics sounded rather odd. Although Morbid Visions received little attention outside Brazil, it established Sepultura as a force to be reckoned with in the underground metal scene. However, it was also the final recording to feature guitarist Jairo Gedges. He was replaced by Andres Kisser, who brought a more refined and technical style of playing to the band. In 1987, Sepultura released their second album, Schizophrenia, which marked a significant step forward for the band. Thanks to the input of Kisser, the album showcased a more complex and varied sound that leaned more toward death and thrash metal than the black metal leanings of their previous recording. Schizophrenia also brought them more popularity in Europe and America and got the attention of Roadrunner Records, who signed them soon afterward. Breakthrough. Beneath the Remains to Chaos AD. Sepultura's third album, Beneath the Remains, was released in 1989 and marked the band's breakthrough to a wider audience. Produced by Scott Burns and released on Roadrunner Records, the album showcased Sepultura's increasingly sophisticated sound. Max Cavalera would comment that the band had found their style with that album. In time, it would be considered a thrash metal classic, and through more touring around Europe and the US, Sepultura expanded their fan base. Now with a solid following in the U.S., Sepultura moved from Brazil to Phoenix, Arizona in 1990. The success of Beneath the Remains also prompted Roadrunner to give the band a higher budget for its follow-up, and the band ran with it to produce what many fans believe is their masterpiece. Arise, Sepultura's fourth album, was released in March 1991. With even better production values and touches of experimentation with Brazilian influences and industrial and tribe music, the album further cemented their status as one of the most influential bands in thrash metal. Like its predecessor, Arise is considered a landmark of thrash and helped further the band's popularity in heavy metal circles. The band promoted the album for the next two years through a series of tours. By 1993, they were ready for the next stage of their career. Noting that the band didn't want to become musically stale, Sepultura agreed to take on a new musical direction for their next album. This new style would define their fifth record, Chaos AD. 
The album featured less speed and thrash influences and adopted a slower groove-based approach along with more influences from tribal music as heard on the instrumental track Kiowas. The album was another success for Sepultura. Despite the change of style, many fans and critics hail it as one of the albums that influenced the groove-based style of heavy metal that became popular in the early 90s, along with the albums of Pantera. By the time it was released, Sepultura had become a prominent name in the heavy metal scene and was the most popular band signed under Roadrunner Records. Roots Bloody Roots and Max Cavalera's Exit. It took Sepultura another three years to come up with a new album, and during that time, members of the band have opened up to a diverse range of influences outside of extreme metal. The alternative metal movement that would later explode in the late 90s was developing during this period, and Sepultura was one of the bands to absorb its style. Additionally, the band furthered their interest in the native sounds of their homeland Brazil. In 1996, Sepultura unveiled their sixth studio album, Roots. It was perhaps the most experimental the band had ever been, and saw them distance themselves from the thrash style they developed in the late 80s to early 90s. Instead, Roots featured downtune riffs derived from new metal bands like Korn and a heavier emphasis on world music that reflected their Brazilian heritage. The band collaborated with indigenous tribes in Brazil for the album. Although it was an uncanny combination, Sepultura's experiment paid off and Roots became one of the band's most popular albums. Many critics praised it as a definitive heavy metal album and complimented Sepultura for their innovation. Despite their continued success, Sepultura faced a major setback in 1996 when Max Cavalera left the band. His bandmates wanted a change in management and so had to fire their current manager, Gloria Buchnowski, who was also Max's wife and the mother of his son, Dana, who had recently died. As a result, Max quit in protest, feeling betrayed by his band. He then started his new band, Soulfly, the Derek Green era. Meanwhile, Sepultura carried on and hired a new vocalist, Derek Green. Their first post-Max album, Against, was released in 1998. While it continued the band's experimentation with tribal music, it wasn't as popular as Roots. Their 2001 follow-up, Nation, didn't do well commercially either. However, the band started to regain some critical praise with its subsequent albums, 2003 Roarback, which featured a cover of U2's Bull of the Blue Sky, and 2006's Dante 21, a concept album based on the Divine Comedy. 2005 also saw the release of Sepultura's first official live album, Live in Sao Paulo. After the release of Dante 21, drummer Igor Cavalera left Sepultura and reunited with his brother Max to form Cavalera Conspiracy. His exit left the band with none of its founding members, and to this day, bassist Paolo Jr. is the only member from the original lineup that remains. However, this didn't deter the band, and they soon brought in drummer John Dolabella as Igor's replacement. With Dolabella behind the kit, Sepultura released two more albums, Alex in 2009, another concept album based on the book A Clockwork Orange, and Kairos in 2011. Soon after the release of Kairos, Dolabella left the band. He was replaced by the then 20-year-old drummer Eloy Casagrande. The following year, Sepultura announced that they will be reuniting with producer Ross Robinson, who produced their 1996 album, Roots. In 2013, the band released its newest album produced by Robinson titled The Mediator Between the Head and Hands Must Be the Heart. This is the band's first album with Elroy behind the drum kit. Around this time, unlike the early post-Max Cavalera years, Sepultura's output was becoming more acknowledged by fans and critics. Some have even said that The Mediator is perhaps the band's best album since Roots. But the band refused to rest on its laurels. In 2017, they released their 14th album, Machine Messiah, which also received critical acclaim. And in 2020, just a month before the COVID-19 outbreak, Sepultura released its 15th album, Quadra. Reviews stayed positive, with all music's Thom Yurik even saying that it's Sepultura's first album to actually stand on equal qualitative footing with their classic trilogy, referring to the albums Beneath the Remains, Arise, and Chaos AD. The band remained productive during the pandemic by collaborating with different musicians in recording lockdown versions of some of their classic tunes. The result was the compilation album Sepulquatra, released in 2021, featuring guests such as Anthrax's Scott Ian, Motorhead's Phil Campbell, Testament's Alex Skolnick, and former Megadeth bassist Dave Ellison. 
In July of 2022, Derek Green said that Sepultura will start working on its next album after finishing its tour to support Quadra. After almost 40 years and with many releases under their belt, Sepultura is still going strong and has a lot of stories left to tell.